sure that lad doesn't budge from Talmberg until things quieten down. Not to worry, friend. Anyway, he's injured and needs to recover. I'll lock him up here as if he were Havel of Baldic. I see you've grown a thick skin since your tribulation, sir. But thank you. We'll meet again when circumstances are more favorable. Farewell. Farewell, friend. And good fortune. Give my regards to Sir Hanish. I will. And good luck to you and your people, too. It's a dark time. Move out! Hello and welcome back. You're watching Perry This. Today we are continuing our history video series and diving into the real life history of another character from the fantastic medieval RPG set in the 1400s in Bohemia. This game of course I'm talking about is Kingdom Come Deliverance as you probably already know. In accordance with the results of our most recent character poll, Sir Divish of Talmberg will be the subject of this video. I will do my very best to gather and simplify all the pertinent information about his life and share it with you in this video. So let's just get down to it and dive on in. So while I could not find a source that said definitively what year Divish was born in, I was able to find some estimates of his age at other major events in his life, and these would make him about 63 at the time of the events that take place in this game. This puts his birth right around 1340. I was able to learn a bit about his family in early life. His father's name was William, or Willem in Czech, and he had two elder brothers whose names were Jezik of Talmberg and Willem of Talmberg. Uh, presumably named after their father. It is important to note here that although his family is an old and wealthy one, that they did move around a lot, and the castle of Talmberg isn't seen in recorded history until uh, 1297. So this seat, as the center of the family's power, didn't exist until then. Back to the matter at hand, however, uh, in 1357 to 1374, the castle belonged to Jezik of Talmberg, and from 1374 to 1382 to Willem of Talmberg. So Divish's lordship didn't begin until 1382 at the age of 42. So Divish ruled his properties from 1382 to 1390 without much to note historically. However, it was in this time that an altercation between Havelmetic of Valdek and Divish must have occurred. The source of the animosity between the two is not clear. However, I was able to find some shaky speculation that I will share. The first bit of theory I was able to find was that Havelmetic, whose lands were in relatively close proximity to the north of Talmberg, was a poorer noble, and due to his lands not holding much in the realm of strategic location or valuable resources, he was limited in terms of growth because he couldn't acquire new wealth. Talmberg, however, and the rest of Divish's lands were located in a decent trade route, so that meant decent revenue from trade and taxes coming through the area. He held vast forests, great for harvesting game and timber, which was another great source of income, and he was due the taxes of three large settlements, making his fief one of the most valuable in the region, second only to Rite. So some speculation I have seen is that there was no existing conflict between the two. Other than that, Divish was richer, so Havelmetic was jealous, and so he decided to seize Divish's lands for his own. The thinking here was the old adage, better to beg forgiveness than to ask permission. Although I believe that this is most likely the case, there is so also some rumor that suggests that the conflict between Havelmetic and Sir Divish stems from a few decades old feud between the families. This theory is mostly due to the contested nature of Divish's northern domains. The theory here is that when Talmberg Castle was built, the hill and the forests to the north of there were contested by Divish's ancestors and Havelmetic's ancestors. However, since Divish's family was wealthier, they were able to build a castle and assert a claim over the lands which was upheld by the provincial court. So the theory here is simply that Havelmetic's attack on Divish was part of the feud uh, that had been going on for decades, and in his mind was reclaiming territory that was already belonging to him and revenging himself upon Divish in the process. I find this one hard to believe for multiple reasons. The key of which being that I could find no historical evidence to back up the claim that this land was ever contested. From the accounts I found, it appeared that although Talmberg Castle wasn't built until the 1290s, Divish's family had been in the region since the early 1200s, and had simply resided in Ujits, which was part of their domain. So in summary, I would say that what is represented in the game is likely to be the more accurate theory, and that Divish was in the right and Havelmetic of Valdek was in the wrong. In any case, however, Divish's imprisonment is not contested. It began in late 1390 when Havelmetic invaded Divish's lands from the north. 
They were resisted at Pribislavitz, and the garrison there was slaughtered and the town was burnt to the ground. The few surviving villagers fled, presumably to Talmberg, but were only just ahead of Havomatic's forces, which quickly laid siege to Talmberg. In 1391, the castle succumbed to the siege and was conquered by Havelmatic's forces. Divish was then held captive in the Western Tower for seven years, as Havelmatic ruled from Talmberg. This is one of the events, actually, that greatly tarnished King Wenceslaus IV's reputation in the eyes of his nobility. Basically, this whole conflict arose because Wenceslaus, who was king, had not cared enough or been able to resolve this issue legally. And eventually, this led to Havelmatic invading. It was during this time where Wenceslaus gained his nickname, The Idol. So in all reality, although the conquest of Talmberg and temporary imprisonment of Divish may seem like small potatoes, it was actually part of a very large problem that eventually led to the conflict between Sigismund of Hungary and Wenceslaus IV. Greetings, Lord of Talmberg. <laughs> That's the bastard who let the attack at Scullis and kill my parents. Don't be an idiot. Do you want to end up like them? I am Sir Mark Wart von Aulitz. I come in the name of Sigismund of Luxembourg, King of Hungary and Croatia, who has resolved to strike against those who disrupt concord in the land and to restore order in the name of his brother, King Wenceslaus IV. Restore order by burning and pillaging the king's estates. Greetings, Sir Mark Wart. The efforts of the king's brother to bring order to this chaotic land are undoubtedly noble. It seems to me, though, that he and his army have somewhat strayed. As Burgrave of Prague Castle, I am entirely beholden to the king, and here in Talmberg divine peace reigned until your arrival. To what then do we owe the honor of your visit? Yesterday, His Majesty took action against the enemy of the kingdom, the Ratzik Kobila, who has been using the silver from the Skalitz mine to fund insurrection against the crown. Unfortunately, the insurgent escaped. Would you happen to know, noble sir, where he might be at this time? As far as I know, the Sir Radzik of which you speak is the king's hetman at Skalitz. I find it hard to imagine that he would rebel against our king. Nevertheless, I can assure you that Sir Radzik is not at Talmberg. He would be a fool indeed to flee from one castle, where he has little chance of defense, to another, where he has even less. Or do you take the view that my humble manner is any obstacle to your army? Am I to inform the king then? that Zeratsi Kobila is not a Talmberg, and that he has your loyalty. Sir Radzig Kobila is not here, and I have no intention of getting embroiled in affairs from which I have nothing to gain. Very well, sir. As you wish. I will relay your words to the king in the hope he will be as well disposed as you seem to be. Those who have clean consciences and goodwill may find themselves well disposed even at moments like this, when there is little cause for joy. Farewell, sir. It was in the year 1398 that Divish was finally freed, and Havelmedic was driven from Talmberg and retreated back to his own lands, apparently with no punishment whatsoever. It is stated in the game's codex for Sir Divish that it was Divish's friends who finally freed him, and that included, amongst them, were Sir Radzig Kobila. Here I was not able to find any historical reference to the specific events that freed Divish. All I could find was that he was set free, and Havelmatic returned to his lands. There was no specific mention of the people involved in freeing him. However, given that Saradzig was at the time the royal hetman for the province, and therefore was the highest ranking military official in the area, I find it likely that he would have been the driving force behind this operation. The Codex also mentions that uh, at this time where Divish was imprisoned, Lady Stephanie, his wife, tried to raise the ransom to have him released, but again, uh, I was not able to find any reference to this. However, in this case, it is likely that her actions were simply not recorded due to the fact that, at the time, the actions of females, even of noble families, were considered of little import, and therefore didn't warrant detailed accounts to be written down. So, from 1398 to 1400, Divish governed from his seat in Talburn Castle. 
However, in the year 1400, he was granted the office of Burgrave of Prague by Wenceslaus IV, and he moved his seat to Prague Castle in 1401, leaving Talenburg to his wife, Stephanie. A little historical background on, the, on this office is important, so the gravity of this appointment is understood. The Prague Burgrave was, at the time, the highest-ranking political office in Bohemia, second only to the king. At the time, it was also known as the Prince of the Empire, the Viceroy of Bohemia, or the King's Deputy. The office of Prague Burgrave was not a hereditary title like the other Burgravits, so it was not passed down. However, it was the only one that was a lifetime appointment, so Divish held this office until his death. At the time, the Prague Burgrave would have done nearly all of the governing for the entire kingdom of Bohemia. This includes tax rates, passing laws, raising and maintaining armies, and settling many disputes amongst the kingdom's nobility. So, from the level of power and authority that this office entails, and the fact that it was granted to a non-family member, which was rare, I can assume that Divish must have done something pretty important to warrant the king's favor here. Otherwise, I think it was done, likely, to make up for the injustices Divish faced as a result of Wenceslaus's inaction. I think that this is likely the case because it was probably an attempt to repair his reputation in the eyes of his nobility. In any case, Divish governed from Prague Castle from 1401 to 1415. In 1415, it is largely agreed upon that Divish returned to Telmberg to hand over the governance of that fief to his eldest son, Aldrich. There are also some sources that say that in 1418, Sir Divish purchased Yankov Castle from Jan Jankowski, and this became the new seat of his family's power until 1702. And while, yes, this is accurate, that uh, that this was the new seat of power for the Lords of Talmberg from 1433 to 1702, it is contested whether or not it was Divish himself who purchased it. This inconsistency mostly arises from the fact that most historians place Sir Divish's death in the year 1415, three years before the acquisition of this new castle. But in any case, somewhere in those couple years, the Talmberg family did purchase this new castle and move their seat there, while maintaining their lands in and around Talmberg. Likely, from this point on, uh, the Telmberg Castle went to a younger son from the family, as was common for the time. As far as Lady Stephanie goes, I was unable to find much historical information about her at all, but I was able to find out that it was very likely that Divish only ever had one wife, and with her, he had three sons, Uldric, Willem, and Mikolaus. So, the story she tells in the game about never having children and such, appears to be entirely fabricated, and likely just used as a story device so she and Henry could bump uglies. However, since Henry is a fabrication, it should be expected that any interaction he had with real people would also be fabricated, so this shouldn't be too much of a surprise for anyone. So to act as a quick TLDR, Sir Divish of Talmberg was born around 1340 and died in 1415 at the age of 75. He governed Talberg from 1382 to 1391, and then from 1398 to 1401. He then acted as Burgrave of Prague from 1401 to 1415. And after his death, his family went on to govern and prosper until the early 1700s due to the actions that he himself was responsible for in his life. Well, that does it for Sir Divish. As you can tell, he lived a particularly interesting life and achieved great things despite much adversity. As always, I invite you to share any additional information you may have in the comments section below and ask you to like, comment, and share at your own discretion. I hope you found this video to be both educational and entertaining. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.